Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christina and in today's video, I am finally getting around to filming an updated Q&A for you guys. I fielded questions over on Instagram more than once trying to get really a sense for what do you guys really want to know? What do you care about hearing about from me? And so I have quite a few questions. I hopefully will not have to make this a super long video or cut it into two, but we will just jump into the questions and they are in no particular order. I was going to try to organize them by categories and all of the things, but it just didn't happen. So I am just gonna jump into the questions. <laughs> First, I have some written down like at the bottom of my planner. Then I actually printed out some of the screenshots from Instagram stories. I filmed from my phone, you guys, 7,000 subscribers in, and I still don't have a professional camera or anything like that. So I had to print them out because I can't look at my phone and film from my phone. So I'm just gonna jump in. So the first one was, how did I discover my style of homeschooling? This is such a good question and I feel like it could be a video in and of itself, but my like instinctive answer is I haven't. And let me explain. So I feel like I'm consistently learning our homeschool style. I'm consistently trying to adjust and try new things and just continue to figure out what works and what doesn't. Like, so there are plenty of different homeschool styles that I love, that I respect, that I value, that I try to implement, none of which I follow entirely. Like, I love so many things about Charlotte Mason style homeschooling. I love living books. So that is definitely an integral part of our style. I love nature, journaling and notebooking, which have become a part of our homeschool style. I love so many things and that's part of the problem. So I would probably say that we're more eclectic. I like trying things. I like trying new things um, and being okay with if it doesn't work out, if it's not our favorite not finishing it or finishing it and then deciding like it's not something we'll do in the future. I would say we're not, we're definitely not classical. We are definitely not traditional in any sense of the word. There are days that are more like unschooling over here. There are days that are more Charlotte Mason. There are days that are a mix. There are days and weeks and months that we use more curriculum than others. We really love unit studies. So I would say that's another mark of our homeschool style is unit studies. We read lots of books together. We do lots of family style subjects. We do lots of unit studies. We love nature study. We're focusing a lot on apologetics this year and um, we're just continuing to learn and grow together. I really love the outdoors and getting outside with them and understanding that learning doesn't have to look like what it looks in school. So that's like definitely a strong marker for our homeschool style as well. I feel like this could be a whole video in and of itself. So if you want more details on that, definitely drop it down below. These are also things that I might do posts about here and there over on Instagram, so we'll see. But that was the first question. Hopefully they don't all take me a long time. So here's a question that I get all of the time here and over on Instagram, even when I'm not asking for questions, and that has to do with high school transcripts. Because I do have a high schooler, he is 15. He, I guess, is 10th grade if you're counting what grade he would be. Um, but he'd be a young 10th grader, even if he were in traditional school. I had always questioned whether or not I should have waited a year that he had been in preschool and they said that they would really strongly recommend that I put him into kindergarten because he was ready. However, he was always the youngest one and all of the things. Again, that could be a video in and of itself. But one thing to know about me is I am a bit of a procrastinator. It's just the truth about me um, it's something I'm trying to work on. I have not looked into transcripts very much. I have not created one. I have not started one. What I am using right now is something that Ashley over at Grace and Grit created. I am sure you probably follow her. Like who doesn't follow her? Um, I love her and find her very encouraging. Even though we have very different homeschool styles, I learn a lot from her. And um, one of the things that I did is I purchased her high school record. So this is what I'm currently using. I filled one out for last year and I am currently filling in one for this year. And it comes with a page where she describes why she created it and how she intends to use it. 
and it's very simple. She said, this is simply something you fill out and then you transfer all of this onto a transcript. And so that is my plan. That is all I'm doing. And I am not stressing it, you guys. Like, it's one of those things where I'm not like going in blind, but at the same time, like I trust God. This is what he's called us to. This is all I need to worry about right now. Like maybe I'll get a little bit more serious about it next year, like junior year, but we'll see. So that's what I'm currently using. I'll try to remember to link this down below. I love the simplicity of it and I love supporting other homeschool moms in their small businesses. So um, that is all I have to tell you about transcripts, how to get a nine-year-old to work independently. This again could be a whole video in and of itself. So starting small. So that is something that like with my four-year-old, so I don't feel the need for any formal schooling or lessons or curriculum. I try to say that as much as I remember to say it because I want to make sure that you are not putting like, not inappropriate even, but like unrealistic expectations on your younger kids and then you're both frustrated. However, because I have older kids who are homeschooling, my four-year-old actually wants to do what they do. So I have like the doodles and pre-writing um, book from the good and the beautiful and so what I'll do is when my seven-year-old is doing independent work which is typically when my older two boys are doing it as well I'll say to him okay I want you to get out your tracing book and I want you to trace a couple pages and just getting him in the habit of doing little bits and I know a nine-year-old is very different from a four-year-old but I would say like maybe starting with them doing the beginning of something with them and then being like okay I want you to finish this up for the next five minutes or 10 minutes and then I'm going to check back in with you like I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee or you know I'm going to cut up some snacks or I don't know getting them started like kind of helping them like if you think about the I do we do you do method it's like you could show him how to do it and then you could do a little bit with him and then be like all right these next couple things I want you to do on your own so hopefully that helps a little bit. Let me know if you want more information on that question. Do we read the Chronicles of Narnia? Whew, another one that could be a whole video, you guys. I should have just used these as like videos for the next year or like months. Um, I get a lot of questions like this because I have shared quite a bit on Instagram on and off when I feel led about things that we do or do not do or think that you know, are not pleasing to God in our lives. And so I get questions about things that seem to be like on the border or could go either way or whatever, because we do not read any books or anything that have like witchcraft or mythical creatures or anything like that. It's a very strong conviction that we have that the Bible says what the Bible says about witchcraft, right? Like if you want to know what the Bible says about witchcraft, it's not hard to find. You can Google it if you don't know where to find it in your Bible. Like I could say, go to your Bible, right? But like, if you don't know where the witchcraft scriptures are in your Bible, look it up on Google, then go to them and read them in your Bible. The Bible's really clear about witchcraft, you guys. So I don't wanna go off on a tangent about that. But then I know there are other things that seem to be a little bit of a gray area. And this is where you need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you guidance, to give you discernment in that area. So I have an interesting story about the Chronicles of Narnia. I was so looking forward to reading the Chronicles of Narnia with my kids because I find C.S. Lewis very intriguing, very intelligent. I find his story really interesting because he was someone who, come, who came from a background in the occult and then met Jesus and wrote these Christian allegorical stories and was super excited about it. Bought the whole box set, okay, had the whole box set. I got a unit on England and I got a whole like crafts and reading guides and I had a whole unit study mapped out even just for the first book in the series. And little by little, I started feeling uneasy about it. I was like, this is weird, okay, like, I started reading it a little bit on my own and I did not have a good feeling about it. I'm like, you know what? Like, what are these creatures? Like, what is this like half goat, half man being that just captured this little girl, drugged her, um, lied to her, manipulated her, lured her back to his home alone? Like, I don't have good feelings about this. I really don't think this is something we should be reading. Um, he gives me major Baphomet vibes. And if you don't know who Baphomet is, look him up. Um, 
but it's just there oh my gosh I could do a whole video about this like Stranger Things has this like Demogorgon being like there are so many beings that are presented to us in books and movies and shows and different areas of pop culture that like we think is just this monster that they made up but really actually has its roots in actual demonic beings and so the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and all things Chronicles of Narnia are a no for us as well as Lord of the Rings and this may upset some people and I know that a lot of families love these good Christian families I am not judging you and if you have sought the Holy Spirit and you do not feel convicted, that is between you and the Holy Spirit. I am not judging you. I am not saying like I am more spiritual than you are. Absolutely not. But when it comes to anything with witchcraft, horror movies, and it, like we don't mess with anything that is not glorifying to God. Okay. And I know there can be gray areas with that, but um, I'm going to try to stop going on a tangent about that because again, that could be its whole whole own video so it's a no for us um as I looked into it and as I talked to one of my friends who is like the greatest like theologian woman that I know um she's really done some extensive research on C.S. Lewis and found that he really and this would kind of make sense found that he really battled with going back into like his interest in the occultic dark arts as a Christian, like, and we all struggle, right, to like work out our salvation with fear and trembling and not go back to our old ways and not go back to old sins and things like that. And so I'm not judging him or trying to defame his name or anything like that, but it would make sense why there seems to be kind of like things in his books that don't sit right in my spirit. And I'm going to follow that as a mom. Like, I don't know why, fully understand why God is like, Mm -mm, why well, have that mm -mm in my spirit but I know it's there and I'm not going to ignore it and we don't need to read it like no harm no foul like there's no loss it's okay if we never read that um so yeah that's my long answer on that I could say more things but I think I'm going to leave it there okay um let me know if you want to know more about that what books are a no-go I've kind of answered that anything Anything that glorifies things that God says clearly in his word are an abomination, displeasing, he hates them. Anything like that we typically try to steer clear of. Okay, living off one income and homeschooling. Oh my goodness, this is another one that could be a video in and of itself. So we have such a testimony about this that maybe I should do a video on and I've shared it different times here and a lot over on Instagram, but we mostly live off of one income like i do make like peanuts from youtube and like peanuts from instagram and um like brand partnerships and things like that however like we do not depend on the money that i make it's kind of like a blessing it's god's provision we use it for like extras or savings or things like that we live off my husband's income and he does not make a ton of money but we really have structured our lives and sacrificed many things in order to make it work because we feel so strongly about this lifestyle for our children and for our family. And so I would cut things out. And I know this can be hard to hear sometimes because I feel like it's kind of the stock answer, or at least it feels like it to me, but there was a very long time we only had one vehicle. And my husband's vehicle, he purchased with cash. It is a very old vehicle. Um, the only reason we have the van that we have is because it was definitely a God thing that we were able to get it. And it's like, you know, one of only a handful of vehicles that can fit a family of seven realistically. And so that's why we have that. We don't really have any streaming services. We have Amazon like Prime Video because it comes with Amazon Prime and we have Amazon Prime. But like we don't have cable. We have like you know, we don't have a home phone and like lots of different things that would be extra expenses that add up. So again, that could be a whole video. Let me know if you want to know more about that as well, because I actually like talking about that. Okay. Uh, 10 plus day in the life, like day in the life of 10 and up kids. I don't know if that's something I'll do or not. I've talked kind of a bit here and there about how I feel about day in the lives. I struggle with them. 
for a variety of reasons, like not want to intrude on my children's privacy and how much of our lives I want to film and show. The amount of editing time that it takes and energy as opposed to just sitting down and talking and maybe editing out like, you know, interruptions or whatever. So I'm going to try to get through these somewhat quickly. Um, what's in the soup from Monday night? I don't even know what soup that was that I was making, but that's really funny. That made me laugh. I need more recipes. Um, I don't know. It was definitely a yummy vegetable filled soup. Um, I should have answered that on stories. What church activities do you all do together and what do the kids do within your church? Oh, love this. This could also be a whole nother video. So we go to church every Sunday as a family. My church has multiple services, which is nice because my older two boys serve in different ministries in the service before the one we attend. And so my oldest son serves in the children's ministry. He's like a student leader is what they call them. And so he's working alongside like at least one other adult and he's doing children's church um, and he loves it, which is so funny because he has all younger siblings. I would think he would like want a break, but he really enjoys it. And then my 11 year old is on the hospitality team. And so he is a host team and he's doing hospitality. So he's serving drinks and snacks and things like that. And he absolutely loves that. My husband and I do not serve on Sundays. Just It just works out better this way. We actually serve in our church's youth group and it's really nice because my older two boys are in youth group. They absolutely love it. And both my husband and I are leaders there and lead small groups for, you know, like I do a girls small high school girls small group and he does um, boys. And so like there are multiple, like we're not the only ones. It's a very like thriving youth group. It's really amazing for our family and because of the fact that we serve there they have child care for our younger kids so our whole family essentially goes to youth group so they all say they go to youth group but my younger kids are in the child care because of the fact that we serve they have child care for um, the people who are serving in that ministry and so it's mostly just Wednesday nights and Sundays and then there'll be like special events here and there and stuff like that but it is a huge part of our life that I am so 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 thankful for and I know it can be really hard to find a church like we were in a church before that that I really loved and respected and cherished and it was really important for that part of our life but it didn't feel like the one and I'm not saying your church has to feel like the one and then I have like I could do a whole video on this I have like church hurt and trauma stories and just like so many things in the past so i do really encourage you to try to find a home church if you don't have one like it is so important and it is such a blessing and i do believe like god has something for us in that so i just encourage you like to find one i wish there was a way that i could help like let me know if there's a way i can help you find a church because i feel strongly about that all right how you dealt with the day-to-day -day in your old marriage outside of prayer okay Whew, that could definitely be its own video. So if you don't know my testimony, um, I was in a very unhealthy marriage for over a decade. And I got married super young. I'm not against that. I think sometimes it works out and it's actually really great. But it was very unhealthy, very traumatic in many ways. I don't like to throw this word around. It was very abusive um, in many ways. I'm not going to get into that. It was very traumatic and very, like, the marriage itself, the divorce, the aftermath, and to this day is rough. This is a tough one to answer because there's the part of me that knows God hates divorce. And there's the part of me that knows that it shouldn't be the goal to get a divorce, right? Like, the goal is always to stay together. But I also understand that we live in a broken world with broken people. And I do believe that there's healing and restoration that can happen in a marriage that is struggling. However, if you are being abused, that is not the time to stay and pray. And so I have to put that out there because I feel like that is something that was lacking that I did not get from Christians, that I did not get from the church that I was attending. Um, it was very much more concerned with like keeping the family together, which of course is ideal. Like God hates divorce because it's not ideal, because it tears fam a family apart. However, God doesn't hate you if you get divorced. God also hates for you to be mistreated, 
right? Like the Bible also says for the man to lay down his life and love his wife as Christ loves the church. And Christ laid down his actual life for the church. And so that actually is the first part before it says wives submit to your husbands. Um, and so I am blessed now to be in a marriage where I actually enjoy submitting to my husband. Not all the time, but most of the time. I count it a blessing and I count it a privilege and an honor to be able to follow him because he's following Christ. And this is just so nuanced because I know there's like such a spectrum when it comes to marriages. There's like, if you are a believer married to an unbeliever, which is so hard. I did it and it's very hard. And I'm not going to say that God can't redeem it because I believe he can, but we all have free will, right? And so that person has to decide to surrender at some point. And if they don't, and if they're abusive, it's not good for anybody. It's not good for you and it's not good for your children. And please reach out if that is what is happening. Please reach out to a trusted Christian counselor. And when I say trusted, like hopefully that's your pastor if you have one. But I also had a pastor who did not give me good counsel in this area. And so this is a very like tender subject that I almost don't want to touch. But I would strongly encourage you, not every Christian is gifted and experienced in counseling, especially counseling people who are in whatever type of abuse, whether it be emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, please get counsel, solid counsel, not counsel that's just telling you to stay and God hates divorce because God is not calling you to be unsafe or your kids to be traumatized by it. And so, I probably don't even want this in this video because this is such a layered topic, but you are asking because I'm guessing that this is what you're experiencing. And so what I did for the 10 plus years. Okay, so what I did in the meantime, I guess I can still share because that was still realistically the life I led for a lot of time. And so I did do a lot of prayer, but it says other than prayer, I served in church, in the children's ministry, and in other capacities in the ministry. And I really like poured into my kids. Um, I did activities with them and sports and, you know, brought them places. And I was teaching at the time, so I poured myself into my teaching. I was working two jobs and going to college for much of the time that I was married and also doing pretty much everything at home. And so I was pretty tired most of the time as well, but there also was a lot of joy in those seasons with my children. It was very hard. Um, I look back and it was only the grace of God that sustained me during those times. I did a lot of reading my Bible. I did a lot of spending time in worship. I did a lot of, a lot of being real with God and crying out to him and asking him like, why he wasn't doing something, why he wasn't changing it, why he wasn't changing my husband. Was it me that needed changing and asking him to help me change and so many different things. But really just realizing now and looking back, God did answer all of those prayers, just not in the way that I anticipated they would be answered. And so I was hoping for a miracle and I believe that I got one in my husband. Um, I believe that God tried to move. I don't have all the answers and I won't until heaven. I do believe that God tried to move on my ex's heart and his heart was hardened and just chose not to go in that direction, not to surrender, not to open himself up for healing and deliverance and all of the things that are necessary to be healthy. There were a lot of things, many layers, like I said. And so I think a lot of the reason why it was so driven with work and school without even realizing it, because I did not have the conscious thought of I'm going to get out. But looking back, I think subconsciously, 
I wouldn't have been able to get out. And so I'm not saying you won't be able to get out if you don't have a job, if you don't go to school. I believe that God is the deliverer and he can do the miraculous. And so I just pray for you right now, if you are in this situation where you are in an abusive marriage, that you would have the right person to talk to and that God would show you the steps and that he would keep you and your children safe and he would surround you with his presence and that he would make a way of escape for you and that you would know that there is hope and that you would not grow weary in your well-doing as a wife and as a mother, knowing that in due season, you will reap the harvest that God has for you. And so we still have really hard things going on. We probably, I don't want to say that we always will, but there's still very hard things going on. But I believe that like in my husband and in my children, I am reaping the harvest of those years of trying to be a really good wife and mother and trying to serve God and trying to believe God for a miracle. And I never thought that I would get married again, not in a million years. I used to have conversations with my grandmother where she would be like, you're still young. You have a lot going for you. You'll find someone else. And I'd be like, man, I don't want anyone else. I don't want to deal with another man after this. Like, I just want to be left alone. I want to take care of my kids. I want to do my job and just have peace. And I joked and said, God would literally have to drop a man into my lap and Jesus would have to come down off the throne and be like, this is your husband in order for me to even consider a man. And in some ways I feel like he kind of did. It was very messy and very traumatic and all of the things and whew, it's a testimony and it's very touchy because it involves a lot of people. But, and God is still restoring, but there's hope. And so that's what I wanna say. It's really hard. It's really, really, really hard. It was very hard. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, but I do not have one day that I look back and question if I made the right decision by getting a divorce. So this is your Christian sister in the Lord telling you that God does hate divorce, but he does not hate you, even if you get a divorce for the right reason. And so oh, that's gonna be a tough one to move on from, but okay. How do you fit in, this is kind of an interesting segue, how do you fit in your quiet time or Bible time? I'm struggling to be consistent. Mm -hmm.